I have been playing with Felto 2 for the last 24 hours and here are a couple of interesting cool features Serif did not share in the introduction videos. The layers panel got a big facelift in Felto 2. Whether it's better or not, I think it's too early to come to a conclusion. But I personally think it got a bit too crowded and even though Serif team tried to improve the distinction between clipping and child layers, I think they did not succeed. I find the new ordering very confusing and the distinction is almost not visible. But there is a small trick I will share later in the video which can help. However, the cool part is now clipping layers can have their own clipping and child layers, which is pretty awesome. Well, actually it also worked in Photo 1, but now you can modify it directly. So let me show you what I mean. I can add a circle and use this as a clipping layer for the photo. To make it a clipping layer, we just need to drag and drop it over the layer thumbnail. The image is now clipped to the circle. I can add a Gaussian blur and move it to the circle, which will only blur the circle which is clipping the image. To level up, I can even add another circle as a child layer and put its blend mode to erase to get the donut with a blur. Now to make it more interesting, let's move the blur to the child circle we just added. Pretty awesome. We now have a donut of which the inside border is only blurred. As mentioned, the same effect can be achieved in Photo 1. I can copy over the circle we created in Photo 2 and paste it to Photo 1. If I use it as a clipping layer, it works exactly the same. However, as you can see, in Photo 1 I can no longer directly edit it. In order to edit it, I have to move it out again. This is definitely cool. Whenever you use a brush on a layer, Photo now allows you to reselect the brushes you used on that layer. After a brush is used, you get a brush icon in the layers panel. And pressing it will pop up with the used brushes. Keep in mind it will only remember the last brush size you used per brush. It also works on mask layers. By the way, it stores brushes from any brush related tool. So, brushes from InPainting or Dodge and Burn are also remembered. Keep in mind that this history is per session. After you close the document, it will be lost. A nice quick way of toggling visibility of multiple layers is by dragging over the visibility icon in the layers panel. The state of the first icon will now be set on the layers you drag over. The visibility icon also now has a context menu where you can hide or show all other layers. In the previous version you could only rasterize one layer. Now in version 2 you can select multiple layers and all the selected layers will be individually rasterized. We also now have the option to merge selected layers only which is pretty useful. Now, when you put a group into solo mode by option or alt clicking on it, you can modify the group contents without exiting solo mode. This will give a much better experience while working with groups. The fill opacity now works like Photoshop for the special 8 blend modes. If I now add a fill layer, set its color to red and change the blend mode to linear light, we can test the fill opacity. The fill opacity is now available in the blend ranges dialog, but also in the effects panel. If I change the fill opacity, it works just like Photoshop. If I do the same in Affinity 1, notice the difference. I double checked with Photoshop and it works the same as you can see. When you turn on the grid and put it to automatic, you will now also get a nice pixel grid when you zoom in. I never liked this in Photoshop, but when you're doing pixel work, it can be really useful. We now have a history of the colors while the document was open, which is pretty useful and will definitely be a time saver. The history is persisted with document safe, 
If I save and close the document, notice how the history is cleared. If I reopen the document, the color history is back. That is pretty cool. The color wheel also now has a hex code readout and an input to directly set a color, which is again a very nice time saver, especially if you know your hex codes. The wheel itself can also be changed into square now. This is pretty nice. Affinity has now, just like Photoshop, the possibility to add multiple layer effects. Where Photoshop only allows 10 effects, Affinity has no restriction, which is super cool, but be careful what you wish for. You cannot mass delete them and you have to delete them one by one. You can also change the order of the added effects. The Select tool has a new option called Auto Select. You can turn it off and when it's turned off you cannot select a layer by clicking on the canvas. Selecting a layer can only be done from the Layers panel. Also, there is an option for Layer or Group, which only allows you to select a group or a layer. Depending on your document, where everything is nicely grouped, this might come in handy. There is also a new option to always select an element of a group instead of the group. First, make sure that the Auto Select is turned on. Normally, when you click on a group, it will select the group. If I enable, and be ready for this, allow selection to consider items inside a group, toggle, that was quite a sentence. But notice now how the layer in the group is directly selected. If you were using the cycle selection box toggle, this has moved to the select menu. The select menu now has more select options, like the next and previous. I'm guessing this will be very useful when recording macros. The preferences dialog got a facelift too, which I think is definitely an improvement. All the settings are grouped, but you can also scroll through them. Two new groups are assistant and link services. The assistant options are now in the preferences, which makes much more sense. The linked services group only contains Dropbox, but as I am not using Dropbox, I have no idea what it does. One thing you need to try in the new preferences is the high contrast UI. This makes the UI stand out a bit more, and as mentioned in the beginning of the video, makes the distinction between clipping and child layers much more visible. Another dialog that got a facelift is the File New dialog. It contains pretty much the same information, but now you have the option to show it each time on startup. Because of this, it got some nice features to make it feel like a starting screen. You can directly open up documents and even view your recent documents. You should be able to pin them, but I have not figured out how to do that yet. Besides having an export to WebP and JPEG Excel, the export dialog now shows a preview which is definitely a nice to have, especially when you're using the area function. I'm looking forward to dig more into Photo 2 and share with all of you new tutorials utilizing the new features of Photo. Thank you for watching.